In the last couple of videos we explored the perform window. In this video we're going to look at the LFO window. In the LFO window we can have as many as three entirely independent low frequency oscillators to modulate our sounds. This top section here is our parameters for the LFO itself. These two sections in the middle, channel parameters and master parameters, determine what parameters our LFO is going to modulate and to what degree of intensity. And this bottom section here, this controller section, allows us to assign macro controls to control various elements of the LFO. So in this channel parameters section, we can set our LFO to modulate the pitch of our oscillators and three other parameters of our choice. So if I turn up the level on this pitch modulation, we can invert the modulation with this little button here. And with these little buttons, we can exempt oscillators from being modulated. So if I go to the patch window and I create a couple more oscillators, I'm going to put a sawtooth in this one, an organ one in this one, and I'm going to change this to a square wave. If we turn off any one of these little ABC buttons, we will exempt that oscillator's pitch from being modulated. So if I turn off A for example, our oscillator A, which is our square wave, that won't have its pitch modulated by the LFO. We can select any waveform from our bank of waveforms, or indeed create a new one for our LFO shape. And we can alter the phase of the wave here. That determines at what point in the wave cycle the LFO starts. And we can control the speed of our LFO with this parameter here. We can either express that in seconds, or if we switch that to beat mode, it will synchronize with the tempo. You may have noticed this little mono or poly icon, the same as we've got on the modules that we can put in our master channel. And this concerns multiple voices. So uh, if I go back to the patch window, I'll just disable these oscillators for a moment. Uh, if we go onto the uni tab of our oscillator A and turn the number of voices up to eight, this mono or poly button will determine whether the LFO modulates each voice independently or whether it modulates them all as one. So in poly mode, it modulates them independently. In mono mode, it applies exactly the same modulation to all the voices. So it's a subtle difference. So each LFO can modulate as many as four parameters, and this pitch one is always fixed. But these other parameters we can select from a list. So for example, we could select filter frequency. And then of course we'd have to create some filters in order to be modulated. <laughs> 
and again we could exempt one of our filters and again we can use these buttons to exempt filters if we want to so our filters are loaded into the first module slot and if I click this A and B button only the filter on C will have its frequency modulated if we had a filter in the master chain we could exempt that too as well as using our LFOs to modulate module parameters we can use them to modulate master parameters including effect parameters or panning Oh, and I nearly forgot to mention there's this sample and hold feature which, if we activate it, basically takes certain points in the LFO's arc and sort of turns it into a ladder rather than a smooth wave. And we can determine how long those ladder steps stay constant with this rate control. and that can be expressed either in seconds or in beats down here we've got our controller section and we can assign a macro control to control the master LFO depth so we can assign that to macro control 1 we can assign a control to the rate so let's say macro control 2 and we could also assign a macro control for the sample and hold rate if we've got sample and hold activated. And these each have a depth control to control to what extent that macro control affects that parameter. And an invert control as well. So if we go over to the uh, perform window, we've got macro control 2 here, that's controlling our rate. However, if we turn the depth down, it'll make much less of a difference. These macro controls can never be set higher than the parameter they're modulating. So the speed of this LFO will never be able to go higher than the rate that we've set it to here. But if we turn it, if we turn the speed up a bit, We'll have a wider range. And we've got an invert button, so that would invert the macro controller, which would mean that on lower values the speed would be higher, and on higher values the speed would be lower. There's a re trigger button down here. And what that does is it allows you to assign a particular MIDI parameter to reset the phase of the LFO. So, you know, that could be a sustain pedal or something like that, or it could be one of the knobs or sliders on your keyboard. If I set it to CC74, which is the first knob on my keyboard, while I'm playing a note, as soon as I touch that particular MIDI knob, the phase of the LFO will reset. So, that's the LFO page. As I said, you can have as many as three of them, and the settings on all three of our LFOs are exactly the same. So, this of course means that we've now covered every single page in Absinthe. And I believe there's only one more thing we haven't talked about, and that is Absinthe 5's internal recorder. So, we'll just look at that now. If we click this record button, Absinthe audio recorder will pop up and this is a convenient way to internally record some of the sounds that you're making with Absinthe so it's handy for resampling and stuff like that or if you've crafted a sound in Absinthe 
that you know you're not going to need in real time. You're just going to need the audio to use as a sample. Or if you've crafted a sound with Absinthe that you know you're just going to need as a sample, you're not going to need to load it as an Absinthe patch and render it in real time. So if I, uh, if I load a preset into Absinthe, that's just a little ambient uh, pad that I created. It's a little bit quiet, isn't it? So if we want to record, first we need to arm the recorder by hitting the record button. And we could hit play to start recording, but when this wait for note button is activated, it'll automatically start recording when we play a note. To stop recording, we can click the stop button. Alternatively, if we have this fixed length button activated, we can set a BPM and a number of beats, and then the recording will automatically stop after that particular length of time. For example, at the moment it's set to four beats, so the recording would stop after just one bar, which at 120 beats pm is about two seconds. If we hit this overdub switch, we can make a new recording to be mixed with the recording we've just made. So rather than replacing the recording we just made, it'll add another layer. So if I hit record again, and uh, I don't have to click play remember because I've got wait for note activated, so if I just play a note, Oh, now that ended very quickly because I forgot to turn off fixed length. Silly me. But no worries, I can just click the undo button and that'll undo the second recording we just made. So let's try this overdub again. We can use these sliders to determine how it's mixed when we make an overdub. So tape determines the level of the recording that we've made. Synth determines the level of the recording we're about to make because it determines the level of the synth going in. We can switch between stereo and mono recording with this button. However, if we've already made a stereo recording and we try and click that button, Absinthe will say this. So if you want to make a mono recording, make sure you've disabled that stereo button before you record anything, because otherwise you'll have to clear what you've recorded. There's an options menu here in which we can set a maximum record time, and we can enable or disable the undo button. We can clear everything we've just recorded, or we can save it. and it'll save as a WAV file. So that is the audio recorder, which means we've now covered everything in Absinthe 5. So thanks for watching this series on Absinthe Explained. I do hope you enjoyed it, and I, I really hope you found it helpful to you. So now you know all the different capabilities we have in Absinthe, it's time to get making some awesome sounds. Thanks very much for watching.